Good morning, and thank you for joining us as we virtually recognize the class of 2020. Before we begin, please join our senior choir in the singing of our national anthem. As we celebrate the accomplishments of the class of 2020, we also remember those who are not with us this evening, those whose presence has helped shape us and been a significant part of our life. Especially when we reach important milestones, we remember all those who had a positive effect on who we've become. Even though we cannot come together as a full school community, we all honor the members of the Fayetteville Manlius High School class of 2020 and to celebrate their successful completion of the course of study prescribed by the State of New York for a high school diploma. To get things started, it is my pleasure to invite the president of the class of 2020, Ms. Madeline Noel, to the podium to address her classmates. When I heard the announcement at the end of junior year, that I was to be elected our senior class president, my first thought was about graduation and that I would be giving a speech in front of hundreds of people. As many of you know and have even witnessed firsthand, I am not a very good public speaker, yet somehow I have put myself in a position where I have to do it quite frequently. Whether it was presenting in front of a class with just 20 people or speaking in front of the grade, it didn't matter. I would start to sweat, get lightheaded, have a stomach ache, and experience a variety of other symptoms that would just make matters worse. Needless to say, giving a graduation speech was going to be hard. Throughout the course of this school year, I had a lot of my friends ask me if I was ready to give my graduation speech or joke around and tell me that I would probably cry or faint. I always answered that I was not ready at all and that I was going to be a mess when it actually happened. But then, one night in January, right as I was about to fall asleep, I sat straight up because I finally had an idea about what I would speak about for graduation. My idea was that I could compare my fear of public speaking to the fear of the unknown after high school. Then I could say how my time at FM had prepared me to speak at graduation, just like it had prepared us for the next phases of our lives. Then school was shut down for a few weeks in March. In the back of my head, I was still thinking about my graduation speech, and I figured I could still give the original speech I had planned. When school was closed for the remainder of the year, the gravity of the situation really hit me. As much as I want to move on and forget about how the coronavirus has affected the class of 2020, it would be impossible to do that. There is no way I could stand before all of you and pretend that everything is fine and that this virus doesn't exist. We may not be defined by COVID-19, but it has changed us, and I hope for the better. I have seen 17 and 18 year olds become essential employees. I've seen people volunteering for others and donating goods or time whenever they can. I've seen classmates helping their siblings and parents with navigating our new online reality. I truly believe everything happens for a reason. And while it is so hard to understand why this happened, I hope it will make sense in the future. I have no doubt that from now on, we will rarely take things for granted because we now realize nothing in life is guaranteed. We will cherish and make the most out of the small things like getting ice cream with friends or getting a haircut. I hope we find less to complain about because we have seen that there are much worse things in life than having to give a graduation speech. 
I hope we greet each other with hugs more often and understand the significance of a handshake. I hope we take care of each other better, are kinder to each other and ourselves, and have tolerance for all of the unique things that each of us brings to the table. There are so many lessons to be learned from these past few months. While we didn't get the closure we wanted, I hope we can realize how truly valuable our time at Fayetteville Manlius was. The first 11 and a half years have prepared us for the future, and the last half of this year has taught us to be better people. There are so many people I need to thank for helping me through these 12 years. My amazing teachers, especially Ms. Wheeler, who edited my multiple attempts with kindness and enthusiasm, my coaches and teammates, Dr. Kilmer, Mr. O'Brien, and the wonderful SAO, who has helped me run countless events, my fellow class officers and Mrs. Chapa, our class advisor, who has made me feel that running for class president was one of the best decisions I've ever made. My family, who has supported me every step of the way, and finally, my classmates. It has been a privilege to be your president, and I truly couldn't ask for a better class. I never thought I would say this, but I would give anything to be speaking in person to all of you right now. This shows that we have still managed to grow and better ourselves no matter what life throws our way. While the circumstances have changed, I still have no doubt that all of you are prepared for the future. Just like how this wasn't the original speech I had planned, this wasn't the senior year we expected. But I think that may make us even more prepared because we have learned how to adapt and become resilient. Nothing in life is certain and things are not going to always go our way, which is what the end of our final year at FM has shown us. However, I believe we will now be able to go through life with a different perspective and use our experiences from FM and our time in quarantine to become extraordinary people. To the class of 2020, I am so proud of all of you and congratulations on an amazing and unique high school career. Each year, the number one student in the graduating class has the honor of addressing his or her classmates during the graduation ceremony. I am pleased to invite Katherine Yang to the podium to address her classmates. Good morning, everyone. I hope you have all been well these past few months. Congratulations on making it this far. Now, I don't think any of us made it here completely on our own, so I invite all graduating seniors to take a moment right now and thank someone who has supported you through this journey. For me, that's my family, my mom, my dad, my little sister Kaylee, and my grandparents. Thank you. Now, on behalf of our class, I'd like to thank the teachers and staff members at FM for all their mentorship and guidance, and also for how impressively they dealt with the pandemic this year. We appreciate everything you do, and your words and actions will no doubt impact us for the rest of our lives. You are true heroes and we already miss you. When Mr. Madden first told me I would be giving a speech at graduation, I wasn't sure what to think. I was skeptical. As I'm sure all of you can relate to, this year has been a lesson in managing expectations. March 13th was our last day of school. Think about how utterly unexpected that is. It is a day I've replayed in my mind quite a few times since then. I remember walking into school that Friday morning, anxiously stopping by Mr. Madden's room to talk with him about college decisions before going to homeroom. Then, fourth period, our public affairs field trip to SU had been canceled. So those musical kids were in the back, writing a letter to Dr. Kilmer, trying to get their performances uncanceled. Before I knew it, it was 2.06 p.m., the bell had rung, and we were all leaving. Things moved so rapidly during the following days as we bargained for less and less. A two-week break turned into a month, which turned into the rest of the school year, until finally we find ourselves here today. I know we've all been patiently waiting for today, for this moment we hope will be of closure. We thought there would be an epic lineup of banquets, ceremonies, and grad parties, all leading up to this moment. I don't think any of us could have predicted that instead, we would be graduating in late July in batches. But hey, the plus side of this arrangement is, if you get too bored of hearing me talk, you can simply mute me, or even walk to your kitchen and make yourself a sandwich. I literally have no way of knowing. Now given this whole backdrop of how our school year ended, I've been thinking a lot about time lately. Logically, time is a linear concept, an unmoving metronome that has been ticking since before we were born and will continue ticking long after we die. 
But the way we perceive time is so elastic. For example, think back to our first day of orientation freshman year, when Dr. Kilmer and the class of 2017 greeted us in the House One gym and warned us of just how quickly four years could pass. Do the past four years of high school feel short like they described, or do they feel like an eternity? Do they feel like both at the same time? I hope high school has treated you well and left you with a montage of good times, filled with sporting events, dances, MUN conferences, outings with friends, etc. But even the best high school experiences have their share of hardships too. As you play through all the good memories and the bad, does time feel like a straight line from A to B? Or does the string of memories get tangled and tie itself into all sorts of knots? Every year at FM High School, we have a dessert night concert, a homecoming game, a cinnamon conference, a spring musical, a dance marathon, a relay for life, and importantly, a graduation, all checkpoints in our school year. We have constructed calendars and filled them with activities that propel us through a rhythm of semesters, sports practices, vacations, rehearsals, and more. So what happens when that rhythm is suddenly disrupted? For many of us, the past few months have been exactly that, a huge disruption in our carefully constructed understanding of time. This might have made you feel uncomfortable. I know it certainly made me feel uncomfortable. I found myself reaching for the TV remote, Instagram, books, FaceTime, and family, anything to occupy myself. This discomfort with being alone with your thoughts has been observed for a long, long time. Blaise Pascal, a French thinker from way back in the 17th century, believed that all of humanity's problems stem from our inability to sit quietly in a room alone. This restlessness is highlighted in one small but very interesting study in which a significant percentage of participants chose to literally shock themselves with electricity repeatedly rather than simply sit in the room with nothing but their own thoughts. I think this applies a lot to our generation's experience. As we itch to fill our time, we have found ourselves consuming so much content. With so much information readily available, it is almost impossible for us to ignore the world outside of our bubble. I would argue that this outward exploration has allowed us to be particularly attuned to certain societal issues, such as racial injustice or climate change. And while this intake of information is vital, I would argue it is just as important, if not more important, to take time to reflect on our place in these matters internally, somewhere without our notifications shocking us into bursts of superficial stimuli, perhaps alone in a quiet room, which leads us back to Pascal and the passage of time. Like I mentioned earlier, we like to mark our growth at significant intervals through these grand symbols like birthday candles and New Year's resolutions. But the truth is, there are very few sharp jumps like that in nature. Think of how unnoticeably your face in the mirror changes from morning to morning. Can you really point to the day you stopped looking like your cringy middle school yearbook picture and grew into your current face? Probably not. Did you notice a striking difference on your 18th birthday? Were you suddenly an adult, or did you feel more or less the same you did the day before, when you were just 17? Spoiler for all the babies who haven't turned 18 yet, it's a very anticlimactic experience. We are easily blinded by this incremental nature of time, which is a phenomenon that gives us the creeps. I think that's probably why uh, we don't like sitting quietly in a room alone for too long. We want life to be tethered and feel concrete, to have sharp edges, clear beginnings and clear endings, pages bookmarked for our convenience, so we can categorize our pasts, color code them, and neatly move on from them. But the very nature of this graduation stands as a contradiction to such desires. This whole year has jolted our assumptions in ways that will only deepen as we move through adulthood. Perhaps life is messier than we thought, Maybe it cannot be sorted into chapters that start with an ornate capital letter and end with a satisfying period. Perhaps, despite all of humanity's efforts to domesticate and sterilize time, it bucks out from our reaching fingers. Perhaps life is gradual in the moment, meaning that every drop of it counts. Perhaps what we see as a shimmering, extraordinary life from afar, when examined under a microscope, consists of nothing but ordinary atoms of time, little pieces that each and every one of us finds in abundance. 
I think that as we finally walk across that stage later today and stumble our way into tomorrow, we can strive to let our complicated relationship with time serve as a source of passion and purpose rather than a descent into madness. Think of each moment as a coin you can invest towards a better version of yourself, towards an incrementally more fulfilling life than the one you currently live. I have taken up this moment with my speech, but the next one is all yours to claim and play with. It has been a privilege getting to know some of you over the past few years, and I truly wish I had the chance to get to know the rest of you better. I hope there is a day we can all meet again, whether that be in person or simply in the past through the memories we share. Go Hornets. Thank you. As is tradition, members of our senior choir will perform a musical selection. This year, they will perform No Time by Susan Broomfield. Let's go meet. 
It is now my pleasure to welcome Dr. Craig Tice, Superintendent of the Fayetteville Manlius Central School District, to the podium to offer some words and to introduce this year's commencement speaker. Thank you, Dr. Kilmer. On behalf of the Board of Education, the school administration, and the faculty and staff of the Fayetteville Manlius Central School District, I congratulate all of our graduates on a job well done. Each and every year, it is my pleasure as a superintendent of schools to impart some sage advice and wisdom to our graduates before I have the distinct honor of introducing the commencement keynote speaker. Given the recent COVID-19 pandemic, it would be very easy for me to craft my remarks to applaud your tenacity, adaptability, and perseverance in completing your senior year away from FM High School. In doing so, I would also have to acknowledge your disappointment in not being able to participate in the myriad of fun and memorable events that would have helped to bring ceremonial closure to your time as a student at Fayetteville Manlius. But to focus entirely on the present would ignore all of the benefits that you enjoyed during your stay at FM High School. To that end, I chose to center my remarks on all that you gained during your time at the high school. As I look for inspiration, I needed to look no further than our current capital improvement project that is addressing facility upgrades at Wellwood Middle School, Enders Road Elementary, and FM High School. <laughs> yes, I said FM High School. While the capital project brought much needed improvements to various high school facilities, I would like to focus on the fact that you were the first senior class to inhabit the newly remodeled Library Media Center. After all, student input through Dr. Kilmer and his team helped to bring life to a library media center that would rival any local high school, but also many colleges as well. In fact, during the ceremonial grand opening in the late autumn, Dr. Kilmer, Ms. Petrulis, and I all mentioned in our official remarks how the facility was built with the students in mind. From the collaborative spaces to the many unique areas designed for different student learning styles, the newly renovated FM High School Library Media Center exceeded all expectations and became the central academic and social hub to the building. That being said, I would like to draw your attention to some of the Library Media Center's other unique design features, especially those that mirror your entire schooling here at Fayetteville Manlia Central Schools. Hopefully, you will see the connections because this recent construction project has a lot in common with your growth as an FM high school student since you first arrived on campus for the link crew orientation. First, I would like to comment on the Library Meteor Center's openness of design. From the movable wall partitions to the open floor plan, you should remember that in life, there are no walls holding you back. Please take comfort in knowing that all of the opportunities afforded to you in your FM education will help to make the impossible possible. Secondly, I would like for you to think about the roof of the library, which included relocating the entrance of the library to be adjacent to the impressive skylight. The roof of the library, like your FM education, was designed for your protection. When challenges arise in your life that may cause you some self-doubt, remember to center your outlook and relocate yourself towards your own internal skylight so that you can see all of the possibilities that await, just like the beautiful blue sky. Next, your FM education is just like the floor of the newly renovated Library Media Center. Your education at FM is a symbol of a solid foundation and should remind you that what you learned here will help to prepare you for the next chapter in your life. 
Never forget that the rigor and relevance of your academic preparation will serve you well for whatever the future holds for each of you. Finally, I would like you to think about the creative design of the newly renovated Library Media Center. The contemporary design of the library, replete with the makerspace, conference rooms, quiet study areas, collaborative work environments, the sunken classroom, computer cluster, and social area with comfortable furniture and high top tables is a graphic reminder that your FM education has prepared you to be creative and adaptable to the many challenges that you will face as you go forward from this commencement ceremony. I encourage you to continue to think and dream about all of the possibilities that life has to offer. While the actual renovations and capital improvements will continue to occur in our other school buildings, your personal renovation, like the FM High School Library Media Center, is complete. You could choose to focus on all that you lost as a result of the pandemic, but I implore each and every one of you to celebrate all that you have gained from your experience here at Fayetteville Manlius. Go Hornets! With that said, it is now my distinct honor and privilege to introduce our keynote speaker. He is a distinguished educator, a valued member of the faculty, and a dedicated colleague who has taught many of you. He's encouraged you to be critical thinkers, to collaborate with others, to be effective communicators, to be creative problem solvers, and to be lifelong learners. Hired as a high school business teacher in 2007, Mr. Gangloff was named as an instructional specialist in 2015. He has served as the JV and varsity boys volleyball coach since 2007. A wonderful family man, Chris's wife Jacqueline and his daughter Olivia and son Brady remain at the center of his life. Mr. Gangloff's resume is impressive and boasts more than a decade of teaching experience here at FM. He is an energetic, enthusiastic, and beloved teacher leader and a trusted mentor, friend, and colleague. Without a doubt, Chris is a hardworking, collaborative, and highly regarded by his peers. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Christopher Gangloff to deliver this year's commencement address. Good morning, Faithful Manlius Class of 2020. Congratulations. I first need to start by mentioning what an honor and privilege it is to have been selected to speak to all of you today. I know that your senior year has been nothing like any of you envisioned, but I hope that today's ceremony acknowledges your years of hard work and celebrates this great accomplishment. The education you've received at FM has at times been difficult and challenging, and especially recently, the way you learn has changed tremendously. Although this global pandemic has not been easy, I think it's taught us all a few things. The need to be flexible and willing to adjust are important qualities to embrace as you move forward with your education or enter the working world. Have an open mind because tomorrow's normal may look nothing like today or even yesterday's normal. The past couple of years in school has seen the Positivity Project grow and have an increasing impact on our community. The key thing that I take away from the Positivity Project movement is the concept that other people matter, especially now. Be kind to each other. Listen to what others are saying. Reach out to a friend you haven't spoken to in a while. And tell your family and friends you love them. As I look out at all of you students through this camera, I see individuals with tremendous talents and the potential to accomplish things you can't even imagine. As you all move forward with your lives, you are now presented with an amazing opportunity. You've got the chance to go out and leave your stamp on the world. Your stamp can look like anything you want. Your stamp is only limited by what you think are your limits. Everyone's stamp will be different, and your stamp will probably change over time. I know mine did. Maybe you'll leave yours in the field of medicine, music, engineering, or finance. My only advice is that your stamp makes a positive impact on those around you in the world itself. 
I've long wanted to share the following story with a wide audience, and it's fitting that you are the class where I have the opportunity. For those of you that have had class with me, you know I love telling stories, and you may have already heard this one. However, today, I think this story takes on much more meaning. Up until this point, your lives have been bookended by two events that caused major change and disruption across the globe. Obviously, right now, we're living through a health crisis that has changed our daily routines and our definition of normal. It's changed the way school looks and the way many people conduct their work days. Going back to the year before most of you were born, the attacks on the World Trade Center and Pentagon on September 11th forced our country through another set of massive changes. Travel, security, and daily life developed into a new normal back then, too. I'm going to share a story with you from that day on September 11, 2001, that exemplifies leaving a stamp on the world while embracing the idea that other people matter. This is a story about Wells Crowther, a college roommate of mine, and his experiences on that tragic day. This September will be 19 years since those attacks, and it just so happens that 19 is the jersey number that Wells wore while playing lacrosse for Boston College. 8 a.m., September 11th, 2001. Wells arrives at work to his trading desk at Sandler O'Neill, an investment firm located on the 104th floor of the South Tower of the World Trade Center. Wells is doing his normal work responsibilities on a beautiful, sunny New York City morning. 8.46 a.m., a commercial airplane hijacked by terrorists crashes into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. 8.55 a.m., an announcement over the PA system in the South Tower assures that the building is secure and Wells remains confident to stay at his desk. Wells calls his mother and leaves a voicemail saying he is fine and not to worry. 9.03 a.m., a second commercial airliner is crashed into the South Tower, making impact 20 floors below Wells' office near the 78th through 84th floors. 9.10 a.m., Wells leaves his office in an attempt to evacuate the building. He makes it down to the 78th floor sky lobby, which is engulfed in flames and smoke. There are many dead and severely injured people throughout the lobby. With his trademark red bandana now around his face, he never left home without one in his back pocket, Wells finds the only functioning staircase left. He begins to gather the injured that are able to walk and leads them to the staircase with a fire extinguisher in hand. He guides several people down 17 flights of stairs to clear air even carrying a severely injured woman across his back the entire way. They meet uniformed firefighters at this point, who guide the injured down the remaining stairs and out to safety. 9.25 a.m. Instead of heading to safety with the others, Wells instead goes back up to the sky lobby to assist others in need of helping. 9.40 a.m. After leading another group of injured all the way to the ground floor lobby, Wells now tries to get the firefighters there to bring the jaws of life up to the sky lobby to rescue several people trapped by steel beams. 9.59 a.m. The entire South Tower collapses in 10 seconds, crushing Wells and the other firefighters as they try to save more people. In all, Wells made three separate trips to the sky lobby and help save the lives of at least 15 people. On March 19, 2002, Wells' body was recovered in the wreckage of the South Tower. In the months immediately following September 11th, most of these details were unknown. Through the diligent work of some New York Times reporters, the last hour of Wells' life was learned. The key that tied it all together was the red bandana that Wells was wearing that day. Many survivors recalled this detail and the red bandana has since become a symbol of heroism and selflessness. Wells was just 24 years old when he lost his life on that September day, a young life gone way too soon. However, in just a short period of time, Wells was able to leave an incredible stamp on the world by the friend he was, the lives he saved, 
and the many others that he has inspired since. He lived his life every day with the attitude that other people matter, and he spent his last hour proving it. I'm grateful to have been able to speak with you on this special day, and I cherish the wonderful relationships that I've been able to develop with many of you. It pains me that our time together this year was cut short. I hope each of you takes something from the story I've shared and realize the impact that one person can have. I don't want my stamp to be the guy who gave the graduation speech on the computer. So instead, I'm going to leave you this morning with a challenge in the form of a question. What kind of stamp are you going to leave on the world? I must admit, I struggled with what I could possibly say to you this year. What do you say to a community that's navigating such uncertain times? What do you say to a group of young men and women who are about to embark on the next phase of their lives at a time like this? As I stared at the blank page in my office at home, my youngest child walked in, climbed on my lap, gave me a big hug, looked me square in the eye and simply said, I love that we are all home together as a family. In that moment, he found joy and happiness in the extra time he got to spend with his siblings and parents. For he didn't miss the hectic and busy nature of our family's lives. There were a lot of times throughout the last few months my children were able to remind me that even though there may have been things we have missed, we all have had experiences and made memories we never would have in other circumstances. Now more than ever, it's important to remember that you have the power to make a difference in your life and in those around you, no matter the circumstance. Even though it can be difficult, you will decide how you will perceive the world around you. You decide how you will respond to the gifts you receive and the challenges you face. Every one of you will be blessed by both. These gifts and challenges help to define our place in the world. Will you work to better yourself and those around you? Will you embrace each experience life throws at you? Or will you be a passive victim of circumstance? Our time on this earth is limited. Don't waste it living someone else's life. Having a strong sense of self, embracing your values, will allow you to feel comfortable with yourself and the decisions you make. As Mr. Gangloff discussed already, embrace the other people matter mindset. Just as others have an impact on the trajectory of your path, you have an impact on the path of each person you come into contact with. You have to decide whether you will work to make those interactions positive ones. Living in a world where we focus on caring for one another instead of placing judgment is a world we will all find greater happiness in, especially in times like these. In a world that seems to place greater emphasis on self-interest, take time each day to show others how important they are to you. Find ways to place others ahead of your own self-interest. I hope you will take the time to smile each day. You are in control of your attitude. Each day is full of endless possibilities. You just have to be fully present to see them. When you walk down the street or through a store, don't stare into the ground. Look people in the eye and smile. You'd be surprised how often you get one back, even with a mask on. Try to always live in the present. Don't be overwhelmed by the thought of the future, nor weighed down by the past. Take time to enjoy every step on your path. I hope you continue to seek out your passion. Having something you are passionate about in both your personal and professional life makes each and every day exciting. I hope that your experiences at FM, both inside and outside the classroom, have helped you hone in on what it is that ignites your passion. Finally, 
As my children reminded me, I think we all rediscovered during this pandemic, no matter what happens around us, our greatest source of strength and our greatest supporters are our family and friends. So always keep them close. They will be there for you in good times and in bad. You are here today partly because of the support that your family and friends have provided along the way. I hope that you will look back on your time as an FM student and be proud of yourself and your school district, for we are proud of each of you. Congratulations, class of 2020.